Stitchy Tube, settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Teresa needs a haircut. This is take number two. Thanks a lot, Zero. I was like 10 minutes in and I went to get something to show you guys and he somehow closed the window and said, yeah, go ahead and delete that. But I love him. What can I do? This is Stitchy Tube number 53. It's still number 53. Lucky number 53. They're all lucky. They're all lucky. And I am coming to you today from crisp and autumnly Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Thank goodness fall is here. We still had 80 degrees last week one day and it's just like, come on guys, turn off the heat. Turn off the heat outside so we can turn on the heat inside. Doesn't make sense, does it? Um, things are good, things are good. We're feeding the birds outside because they're hungry because it gets cold at night. So the Jays have been outside screaming for nuts, which is what they do. They're so loud. God bless them. We get the Cardinals, the Morning Doves, some Finches. We've got a couple of Woodpeckers and the Squirrels. And the Squirrels are looking real good. So um, let's, uh, let's start with the drawing. I already announced this once to myself, but it was a practice run. So we're going to announce it again. Last time I had a giveaway of two charts from... The Scarlet House and uh, the winner of that is Peggy Young and exciting for Peggy because she's a new viewer so Peggy you started viewing and you see you just reap the rewards so congratulations to Peggy she said she made some apple bread for her quilting bee and it went over really well it's fun to read about what you guys are baking or like to bake I haven't done any baking the last two weeks I, I don't think I have to be careful because it's mainly just Steve and I here and um I notice when I make food now, it takes longer for it to disappear. I've got a couple of bananas sitting on the counter, so I'm thinking banana muffins may be in my immediate future. But Peggy, go ahead and email me down below your uh, address and I will get your charts out to you. Zero, what am I going to do with you? I'm going to throw you outside with the J's. So uh, for next time, I have a, a giveaway that I tried to give it away like months ago and nobody ever contacted me. And now what did I do? Did I actually give it away? It was here. I swear it was right here. Here it is. It wasn't where I put it the first time. The Mooster Tuker book. I carry these on my website. It's an out of print book. And typically it comes with charts in the back. And when I got this from my supplier, uh, it was miss this this one was missing the charts and so I emailed and said hey this one was missing the charts and he said no problem I'll just refund you for that one so I didn't pay anything for this book I hate to just throw it away because it's a perfectly good book otherwise it's a uh, sampler history and it's in German and English so if you're looking to bone up on your Deutsch you can pick this up so the question is what do you just really not like to eat and uh, for me, I'm not much of a seafood person because I grew up in landlocked North Dakota and the light's just not great today. I feel kind of washed out. I feel kind of washed out. Whoa, then I'm really washed out. Let's try this. Let's try this. No. So uh, I grew up in landlocked North Dakota and at the Catholic school I went to, we had corn dogs sometimes. And gosh darn it, I hated corn dog day. I don't really like cornbread. I don't like corn muffins. I like cornmeal on the bottom of a pizza and I like corn tortillas, but that's about it. Um, I like corn. I don't know. There's just something about like the gritty texture and the sweetness of the bread. I don't know. So if somebody offered me a corn dog, I think I would have to say thanks, but no thanks, or just pick like do like I used to do and just pick the cornmeal off. And then it would stick to it. This is not good. So no thanks on the corn dogs. Uh, please have, have it be food. Like we know you won't eat dirt unless you do. So what is something that you won't eat and you'll be, uh, you'll be in the running next time for the Mooster Tuker book. Okay. Zero. We're almost back to where we started from. So, um, I have a quandary for you. I was talking to, um, a friend of mine, a designer, reproducer friend from England. You may know her. You may love her. Her name's Nicola Parkman. She's a lovely, lovely lady, very talented, very passionate about samplers, teaches a lot of classes. She comes over to the States. Seems, seems like she should just kind of live here now. She's over here all the time. 
But we got to talk um, this week by Facebook, and it was really great because it doesn't cost anything, and we got to have a face-to-face -face conversation for quite a while, um, and about samplers, and we kept running to get other samplers to show each other, and it was really cool. So she's got two samplers that are out now. Mine will be here shortly. I like to order directly from her to save her the um, giving the distributor a cut. And so um, the first one is Ann Thomas, which holy cow, border. The border is beautiful and I love a big old bird. So it's such a pretty sampler. The colors are amazing. I'm sure it would be fun to stitch just partly because of the colors. And then the other one she's got that's new is Mary Willis which is a really interesting uh, Quaker band sampler. And if you've never stitched a band sampler before, you should, number one, <laughs> because the cool thing about band samplers is uh, you kind of finish as you go. So you just, you know, you start at the top and you work your way down. It's almost like when you see people stitch the hands across the sea, or not hands across the sea, I'm sorry, the, uh, like, um, the Hades, Heaven and Earth designs, there we go. Heaven and Earth designs are like the scarlet hair where it's like the full coverage confetti pieces and people start in the upper corner and then work their way down so they're kind of completing as they go. It's the same kind of concept and so you really feel like you're making progress because it's like you're finishing, you're finishing, you're finishing. And a uh, band sampler, a lot of times you're, you're just stitching something for a little bit and then you're gonna move on to the next band. It's lots of letters often too and repeated symbols. I lo <clears throat> love to stitch words and letters, I don't know why. Something wrong with me, I guess. I find I just find it fun to stitch letters. So she's got those two that are out now, and uh, I have them on my website where you can just pre-order them, and as soon as they're in, I'll stick them in the mail to you. They should, like I said, they'll be here shortly. <clears throat> but while we were talking, I said, Nicola, and she said, what? And I said, can I talk to you about the Uffendels? And she was like, oh, Teresa, what can I do? And she's so lovely. <laughs> I always feel like such a schlub talking to these people from Europe who are so much cooler than I am. Love you, Nicola. You're so cool. So here's the story. The Uffendel uh, samplers were reproduced by Nicola a couple years ago. And they came out in a limited edition book. Now, I brought this up. She did not bring this up. This was my question to her. And then we chatted about it. So... Uh, zero. Oh, I'll do this. So here's what the book looked like. There's there's one of the samplers. Very very pretty. Very 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 pretty. And then the other book, the other side is the her sister sampler. <clears throat> now I have a pair of sister samplers, and I may show you that at the end, because I think I should reproduce the other one this year. Um. So anyway, both samplers are in this book along with a history lesson and the charts and everything. It's a very thorough, very, 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 very nice book. I love uh, the cartoon, well, they're not really cartouches, but the see around their names. How cool is that? Super cool, right? Okay, so Nicola released this book a couple of years ago when she was kind of still just getting started, right? She had never really done a limited run before uh, that was like a big release like this, and so she kind of, you know, took a deep breath and was like, okay, I'm going to order a thousand of these and please let me sell them. So <laughs> I hope I sell them. Right. And so it was a limited edition thing. I think they sold for about 40 euros. I want to say maybe it was like $50 ish US is what you ended up paying for them to get both charts in this limited edition booklet. There were only a thousand. And she said, I'm not reprinting. Like this is it. Because at the time she was like, this is a huge risk. I may not sell all of these. I may, I may be stuck with a bunch. So, um, you know, she kind of figured out how much, how much she could stand to, you know, kind of keep if she, if she had to keep them all. Um, it sold out quickly. I don't, I don't know how quickly I got a copy I knew it was coming out. I missed the release because I think I was just not paying attention. And then I think I announced, I don't know. Anyway, somebody pointed me to a shop that still had some and I think I got their last one. No one has these anymore. 
Okay. No one has these anymore. Don't ask me about the shop that I got it from because number one, I don't remember. Number two, I got their last one. Number three, no one has these anymore. There were 1000 period. Nicola said she doesn't even have a copy. She has the original like printer's proof and that's it. So they are not available. So, you know, I've heard stories from different people about like these, you know, these booklets selling for, you know, a couple hundred dollars on eBay. And I don't know if it's true or not, but a couple of weeks ago, somebody emailed me and asked, which I get this question often, do you know where I can get an Offendel chart? And I said, no, I don't. She said that one recently sold for over $800, which you can buy a couple of kind of cool samplers, like actual antiques for $800. So that's a lot. She said, I can't afford that. And obviously, I, I don't know very many people who could pay $800. But what I'm saying is they're very in demand. They're very sought after. And people want them badly, badly, badly. But Nicola had said at the time, like, you know, this is a limited, this is a limited thing. I'm not reprinting, right? And obviously, when you say something is not going to be reprinted, it drives demand some, right? Because people pick something up. Um, thinking that maybe they, you know, maybe they wouldn't buy it otherwise, or they might think about it for a while if they know that it's not limited, right? But if you know it's limited, you're like, oh my gosh, if I even kind of think I want that at some point, I better buy it now or it's going to be gone. So it is a sales technique and a lot of designers use limited edition, you know, kits and, and charts. And I've even seen, you know, limited runs of fabrics and things like that. So it's, you know, there, a designer who does limited edition things opens herself up to criticism. There are some people that feel it's not fair, you know, that en they end up wanting something that now they can't get and that there's no real reason to limit it. Sometimes things like this are limited because maybe somebody's created a kit and they could only get a hold of XYZ number of whatever finishing thing they got. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so at the time, Nicola felt like a thousand was a ton, like... I may not sell them all, right? People want this chart super, super badly. And so I said, is there any way you could just do like an out of the vault kind of like reprinting? And she said that she just felt like, you know, she had given her word that it was a limited edition thing. And she hates like her, her um, reputation is very important to her, obviously. I mean, she doesn't want to be people to think she's a liar or that she's taking advantage of anybody. She's so, so nice. And so she just, she's like, I, I don't know how I would do it. And, and when I told her that one might have sold for $800, she just, you could see her change colors. Like she just, not that she was like, oh, that money could be mine, but it was more like, oh, people want it, you know, people want it so badly that they're willing to pay so much money. And it's just crazy, right? Because the files are there. She's already charted it. The files are there. So she said, I just, I just, her, she just kept saying, my word is so important. My word is so important. And I said, well, is there any way, you know, and, and she too was like, maybe like, what if you did like a reprint where it was each chart was in its own booklet. So you could buy one or the other or both. So it still wasn't the original printing. It wasn't as it was presented the first time, but people could still get the sampler charts to stitch them because that's what it's really all about is the joy of stitching. Right. Um, and, you know, just having access to something that, that people love. So she said, she asked if I wouldn't mind just asking y'all um, what you think. And there's no right answer to this. Um, so leave it in the comments. And if you'd rather just email me at my email address below, uh, let me know like what you think about that as a, an ethical issue. Is it ethical for a designer to re-release something that was a limited edition that was really popular like this or do you think that do you think that that it's okay to re-release it when demand is such that people are you know doing crazy things to try to get a hold of them um, would it be okay to re-release them in a different format so that it wasn't released in the same way um, sometimes people can be really persnickety about things like this and get really bent out of shape and everybody, of course, is entitled to her opinion. And like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. I think 
it is valid to say, you know what, that's, she said it was going to be limited. And so I really feel like it should stay limited just because that's what she said. That's a fair, that's a fair reply. So I just, I'm taking a very non-scientific poll to see like what people think about the re-release of something like this. So let me know in the comments below, or like I said, um, send me an email. I told her I would kind of compile a list of, you know, answers and things. I'm not telling you this is happening. I'm not telling you she's preparing the printing presses right now and this is going down because it's not. Hang on, let me, let me close this out. Um, this is just a what if or a maybe or is it okay? Um, because, you know, it's, people really want it. And I, I, you see this all the time with designers that maybe stopped designing um, or passed away or, uh, you know, ran out of things that they're not reprinting. This happens all the time where people really, really want something that's out of print. Um, just today, I got an email from somebody who said, do you have or can you get XYZ from this designer who doesn't, isn't in the community anymore? And it's like, I don't even have contact information for that person. So um, this, is, this is one opportunity where, you know, it could happen. But it's super important for her not to have she just says she just would not want her reputation to be tarnished at all. And I just think there would be so many people that would be happy to get it. We're, we're just curious. So chime in <clears throat> or don't chime in. Chime out. Chime over. Chime, or, chime around. That's the quandary. Okay. Uh, let's do a little bit of stash flash. I didn't get a lot of stash the last couple weeks. Um, I did get this in a mana. It is a it's a pencil box. It's really heavy duty, and what a great uh, you know like for holding scissors and things because it's you know it's really cute. It's like enameled. I have actually contacted this company and I'm gonna see if I can get. They have a lot of really cool products, including a lot of stuff with these cute cat faces on them, and I just was impressed with the quality of this. It's very very nicely made. It's a Canadian product. And so um, I picked this up in a mana at the general store and I just hadn't shown it to you last time I came across it and I was like, oh shoot, I forgot about my pencil box. Uh, the design is called Meow Meow Meow. So um, I also got from Nancy at the Victorian Motto Sampler Shop um, my next set of sampler uh, threads. Not, they're not sampler threads, they're just, it's primitive threads that are over-dyed. And there they are. There's the back of them. <laughs> There's the back of them. I really, really like this brown. I'm gonna do it like, okay, see, can you see the brown? This is, this is a real, it's okay, it's out of focus and it's kind of greener than it's looking on the screen right now. Okay, wait, okay, can, oh, oh, I like that brown. And I like this wispy taupe. Uh, the brown is called dark cocoa bean, so she may have it. It's a great uh, prim color, love it. Love it, love it. And then I get her um, her fabrics too that she does. And I, she doesn't name them or they don't come with names. I don't, I don't know why, oh, I missed a call. I don't know who that was from. We'll just, you know what, we're gonna just let it go. And I will call them later. Uh, I don't know what color this is called. It's, can you see it? It's, oh, it's showing, it's showing up as, it's actually really cool. It looks like grungy old dirty fabric. And I get a half yard of 40 count, but you can sign up through her. Um, I think she has like a bloggy kind of a website thing. So Victorian motto sampler shop, right zero. <laughs> he loves me so much. Um, okay, I got a sampler in the mail this week. I watched one for a while. I think it went up for like a 10 day or a nine day deal on eBay. And I was like, oh, dang, that's cool. I don't have one like that. And it's really funny and neat. And I bet it's going to go for a ton of money. So I probably don't have a chance, but I kind of just kept checking. And then the last day I bid and I actually, I won it. And I was like, Ooh, I did not pay that much for it. I felt like I got a good deal. I haven't taken it out of the frame. Does the frame have custom framing by Brooks? Since 1898 from Bethesda, Maryland. I don't know if Brooks is still around. Zero, I'm going to put you down, okay? Here. Yeah. 
a lot of times when I set him down, he'll choke for a while. I think he's just like trying to make me feel guilty. Pitiful. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna hold it kind of like this so you can see it. So it is by Mary, what was her, or Nancy, what is it? Nancy Hartwright from 1801. And not super exciting, right? Kind of cool. It's on 60 count linen. And the words are over one, most of them. Her name you can barely see here. It's in like gold and it has faded quite a bit. And she's just got a couple little birds there. Here's what I like about it. Here's what I like about it. Really? So on this side is a whole list of um, qualities of a wife or a person, I guess, but it's, it's, so at the top it says, let your thoughts be. And then every one of these has three things that you should strive for. So it says, let your thoughts be heavenly, humble, and well-regulated. Uh, two is let your will be obedient. Oh, wait, firm, obedient, and mature. I think I'm failing this test already. Let your words be honest, unfeigned, and profitable. Let your works be godly, pure, and discreet. Let your behavior be courteous, cheerful, and moderate. Oh, wait a minute, am I doing this right? Let your diet, oh, here we go. Okay, I'm doing this wrong. Your behavior should be discreet, courteous, and cheerful. Your diet should be moderate, meat. It says meat, M-E-E-T. That can't possibly be right. Do they mean you should eat meat? I don't know. And frugal. Your apparel should be comely. I'm still failing. Clean. I got that. Decent. Your sport should be honest, short, <laughs> and seldom. Winning! Hashtag winning! <laughs> On the sport being seldom. Woo! Yes. Uh, let your prayers be hearty, frequent, and faithful. Let your sleep be temperate, quiet, and in due time. So no snoring. Let it be. Let your sleep be quiet. Virtuous Eve, grace was in all her steps, heaven in her eye, in every gesture, dignity and love. And then it's got the praise and properties of a good wife. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is above rubies. Her heart, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of infidels. Don't do it. Infidel bread. Uh, oh, not the bread of idleness. <laughs> Not the bread of idleness. I'm even using my glasses. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And then it's got some things about Adam and Eve. I just thought it was super neat. I just thought it was super neat. Um, 1801, it definitely looks like, uh, if it didn't have a date, I would have said late 1700s. It's got, um, you can see the selvage here is almost like a blue. It is. It's navy. No, yep. Navy blue. Dark navy blue. It's in pretty good shape. It's got some holes. I just thought I'd share because that was, you know, I don't know what I'll do with this. I really, really like this part. I probably will just, oh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I mean, it's not beautiful, right? And you'd have to really love, I mean, it is beautiful, but it's not, um, it's not very many colors. You have to really like stitching words to do something like that. But it says you shouldn't exercise that often. And so I feel like for that virtue alone, it's worth stitching. Because people can be like, hey, you're looking kind of flabbier. And you'd be like, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, and then, oh, I got, so I've been looking for this. I collect the Maggie Bonanami books. And I was down to where I only needed one, only one. And it was another place in time. 
And you can see I have Another Place in Time by Maggie. Banamini. Banamini. And it even has a sampler on the cover. Sadly, the sampler is not included. That's just part of her collection. And her books are just really cool. This one I, you know, could have bought a while back used. Um, but every place I was finding it, it was like 65, 75 bucks. And I just, I mean, as much as I love it, it's like, uh, I don't, you know, maybe not. Look at how pretty this um, hooked rug is. I need a couple of lifetimes to do things like that. But anyway, um, that that's the book. I got it for $35. So I had it on my Amazon watch list and I found a copy. So that was, I was pretty excited about that. I had it on my, on my, um, my wish list. Gosh, I wish I wasn't so washed out looking today. Feels like. So, uh, that's my stash flash. What did I write here? Ribbon. Oh, ribbon. That's right here. So I did, um, I needed some supplies for work at Hobby Lobby yesterday. And um, I went through the Christmas aisle and they had this really cool ribbon in red and natural. Okay. So it's in with the Christmas, like from, you know, putting bows on wreaths and things. It is um, $5 a roll. It's normally $9.99, but it's always half off. So you get, I think 10 yards, you get, yeah, 10 yards. It's two and a half inches wide. And it is if it's not linen, it looks and behaves exactly like linen. And I really feel, let's just, let's crack this baby open. I think you could stitch on this is what I'm saying. And you totally could stitch on this. You told, I went to put my glasses on and they were already on. You could totally stitch on this. It looks like it's maybe like a 36 count uneven weave, I would say. It's got this neat, um, you know, kind of blanket stitchy type border. Um, I just thought it was super neat. And I bought almost all of it because I was like, if I, when I go back to get this, it won't be there. And now it won't be there because I bought it all. A lot of that stuff, they don't restock. So Hobby Lobby for, at ours, it was on the way on the top shelf and I had to dig back a ways. And they only had those two colors. Cream would have been also cool with um, natural or something that would have been also cool. So Hobby Lobby, maybe maybe next year. So uh, that's my stash flash. Let's talk about what I'm all into because I'm all into things sometimes. I love I love hearing uh, when I watch other floss tubers and people talk about what they're all into. I just love that. I wish y'all would sing my song though. It's, it's really one of my favorite bits and I feel like I feel like this, I just feel like my lighting is not good. I'm kind of, you know what? I can fix it in post-production. Um, okay, I'm all into getting the vents cleaned. So, you know, we're homeowners and we rented up until we were in our late 20s and then we bought a house in Fargo. And we did not have central heat or air. We had a wall air conditioner and we had the heat you know, kind of strips at the baseboard type heaters. So there were no vents and we lived there for nine years and then we sold it and we moved here and then we did have vents and we've been here for 13 and 13 plus years, a little bit more than 13. Um, I knew that vent cleaning was a thing and I realized ours probably needed to be cleaned because our, we were not the first homeowners. Our house was four years old when we bought it. So it's a 17 year old house. So I called a guy and they came in. It took them four hours. They did a very good job. They took all of the, the you know, vents off of every ceiling. In some rooms, we have multiple vents. Cleaned them. One of them, <laughs> he came in and was like, look at this. And I'm like, I know that's why you're here. It's so bad. It's so bad. Because this business of fabric, threads, charts, paper, books, cats, dust. Creates dust. So they cleaned all of those, disinfected those, sucked the heck out of the whole system. And I can tell a difference. It was not cheap. And that was, I think, part of the reason I was avoiding it is because I just really didn't know how much it was going to be. And it was $1,400. But it needed to be done. And he said, you really should do it every eight years. 
So I feel like we really far <laughs> went past when we should have had it done. And I said, well, I will not wait 13 years to do it again. I promise. Anyway, I'm all into that. Uh, it, it, it has made a noticeable difference in the amount of dust. Okay, what am I all, else all into? I am into roasted potatoes with lemon. We made them last night for dinner. Um, we get HelloFresh sometimes. And I made some tenderloin, which was very good. And it was just potatoes just chopped up and then roasted with olive oil and salt and pepper. My mouth is watering, which is easy. And that alone is good. You know, you just put the oven on to 450 and you put it on like a top rack. And it takes like 20 minutes, 24 minutes to to do that, you gotta stir it once in a while. And then when you're done, they actually had you squeeze lemon over the top. That was good. That was really good. So I'm gonna actually work that into my repertoire because that's easy and it was really delicious. It was really delicious. You notice he stopped choking. He realized he wasn't getting anywhere. The other thing I'm all into is uh, Christmas is coming in fast and low. It's uh, getting ready to land. It feels like, you know, Halloween gets over and then boom, we're at Christmas. All the stores are decorated for Christmas. Um, and I just feel like this year, and I, I guess I don't know, is Thanksgiving kind of late this year? It just, I just feel like Christmas is going to be here before we know it. And I like Christmas and I have no problem with starting to celebrate the first day of November. It's fun. You know, winter, it's, it's fun. I'm all into these caramels. So here's the story, guys. These were a limited edition thing that you could get. I got mine at Target in a bigger bag for the first time. And I got the last bag they had, and then they were just out. And I thought, I'll take these to the retreat, the Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat. So I brought the bag, and they had a candy table. And so I went and I dumped it all out on the table. And then I grabbed one to eat while I was walking back to the table. They're caramel apple flavored soft caramels. So I, I put one in my mouth, started walking back to my table, did a loop, came back, and filled my hands with them again. <laughs> I, I left some on the table. But all weekend I kept going back because I was like, these things are good. So Jen and I kept, kept snacking on caramel apple caramels. So when I came back to town, I looked everywhere to see if I could get more. And I ended up ordering some of these online because, like I said, they're limited edition. It tastes just like a Granny Smith apple caramel apple. But it's all chewy. They're really good. So I hope they bring them back next year. I got 10 bags, but they're just, they're small bags. They come with like 10 each or something like that. But the ba bag I got originally was a bigger bag. So you may still be able to find these online. I think they have other um, Christmas ones now, but man, oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. Let's put that on the floor. Oh, okay. So I'm all into, uh, the other night I was like, I need to just lay down. I've been trying not to like do screen time at bedtime because I just need to sleep. I, I'm still not sleeping great. And I pulled this off my shelf um, to look at. It's, it's um, it came out, gosh, it came out probably at least 10 years ago. Let's see if we can figure it out. It's called I Like You by Amy Sedaris. She is the sister of David Sedaris, who is kind of a famous essayist. Yeah, 2006. Um, she's a famous, uh, he's a famous essayist, a humorist, um, who's written a number of, of books. And he's sometimes, you can hear him on NPR, but he's very, very funny. So she was also in the show Strangers with Candy. And she's done a number of projects with Stephen Colbert. And you've probably seen her. I think she had some commercials. I think she was on like a like a laundry soap commercial for a while. Anyway, she's a funny lady. She's a funny lady. Let's bring her on out, Amy Sedaris. She's not here. But I have this book, and then she has another book that's called, what is it called? Simple Times. It's about crafting. This one is about sell, uh, like hospitality, having people over, throwing parties. And it's funny. And it's, um, now it's, re I would say it's rated PG-13. There's really not swearing, but there are adult, some adult type of themes. And they're, it's super funny because it's got lots of great pictures. And the food and decorating, like, the food and decorating, what I call it, aesthetic is very, like, late 60s, mid 70s kind of thing. It's like food that it's like, oh, yeah, I remember when people used to make stuff like that. It's very funny. Um... And like, here's a, here's a cold, here's a cold cut tower and it's very funny. So 
I would recommend it if you, you know, think you would like that kind of thing. You can actually find copies of this on Amazon. I saw for as little as a quarter plus shipping. Um, in, and I think it came out in soft cover too. I got the hard cover and I got these when they came out. But um, I have her other one too, Simple Times, which is about crafting. I think this one is better. The, the crafting one came out second, still very funny. And so I hadn't read it for a good long time. And so when you forget about things, then the jokes are kind of new again, right? Um, here's the back cover. It's got her and her pantyhose. Anyway, I would encourage you to check it out. All right, let's talk about whips. Uh, I had, I had, so I finished this and I had it written down last time. Did I show it finished October 31st? If I did, here it is again. If I didn't, here it is for the first time. This is a Brenda Gervais piece. Brenda Gervais, Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. It's called October 31st and, uh, it was really fun to stitch. And I finished this up, um, right around Halloween. I did the grass. Can you see the grass up and down? So I stitched with the over dyed threads up and down. So it looks like grass growing up and down rather than side to side, which I really like. I don't know how I'm going to finish this yet. Probably put it in a little frame and it'll go with me to shows and such. It was really fun to stitch. It was really fun to stitch. So that's one whip, one FFO or no one FO finished object. Uh, I'm working on last night. I've been working on my stuff for the silver needle this last month, but I can't, I'm not going to show it to you until that's over. It's really, really cute. Henrietta, she doesn't have a head yet, um, by Stacy Nash. She has this set of animals that, do I have the cover here? So I think she's really cute, little hen. And then she, you can do this little pin, pin keep to go with it. And uh, I started this one, I think, Stitch Mania, maybe 2018. And I picked it up again. I finally got done with that infernal dress. It took forever. I'm stitching it on 40 count, so it's really small. There's actually a lot of stitches there. Can you see? Can you see? So that's fun. Super fun. Super fun. Okay, I'm going to show you something that I'm very, very proud of that most of the people around me are wary of and won't commit to saying they like it. Please tell me you like it. Somebody tell me you like it. I bought some patterns from Brenda Gervais on her website, and I showed those last video, I believe. And so two weekends ago, I got a wild hair, and I said, you know what? I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna make one today. I really wanna make one. Um, the name of the pattern is called Miss Hilda, and you can get it on Brenda Gervais' website at Country Stitches Online. Are you ready? I made her, I made her using the directions. So she is a doll with a pumpkin head. Give you a big, good close up of her face. The head is made with paper clay, which I had never used before, but I'd always wanted to use. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. It's like a weird, it's not like paper mache, it's, but it is. Like it's, it's still very, very, very fine paper, but it's almost like a clay. It, I mean, it is like a clay, it's paper clay. And so it comes in a block and I think at Hobby Lobby, it's like $9.99 and it was enough to make two heads. So I made a cat head to do another one at some point as I didn't know if it was going to dry out. But you bake it, you, you shape it around um, tin foil. The instructions are super clear. Like if you think you can't do it, you actually can because she has lots of pictures on what you should do. Do this, do this, do this. And it's not hard. And then there, were, there was a pattern for making um, her little bag. This is actually stitched. And I backed it with linen also. And then I actually, she wanted you just to pin it to her dress. I actually braided some jute and made it so it's like a purse so she can wear it. And then I went through my buttons and I added some things. So like I added buttons to her sleeves. I added this button on her chest. Um, I made this hat and I added a button to the hat too, an old cruddy button. Um, this was all just fabric I had around here, some homespun. And um, she's got her boots. I'll show you her legs. She's got little boots. You just, you follow the pattern and you turn them inside out and you stuff them and then you paint them with just acrylic paint and then you can kind of rough them up a little bit. I filled her with sawdust, which works great. She's got a really nice heavy feel to her and she sits up nice and tall. Um, I did also gather, um, Brenda wanted you to kind of have it where, you know, it was kind of real loose across the shoulder and I 
felt like it was going to show her bosom. So I, I did kind of a whip stitch, just kind of a fan, you know, not fancy stitch around the edges. And then um, I also did a kind of a gathering stitch where you go in and out and in and out, pull it to make it kind of come together. And then I tacked it in a few spots so it would stay up. I like her. Um, I had this old belt buckle too. And I just, uh, I think Brenda said to use a piece of wool for the belt and I decided to use a piece of just this old, old looking fabric that I had. So I made her, I think she's cute. You can't have her. I don't, I don't know. I don't think any, everybody here, I was like, look at this. And they're like, oh, that's creepy. She just wants to be loved. All right. Um, just a couple of other things. The Southern Pines uh, Animal Shelter is heading into the Christmas holidays. And I last year we did a big fundraiser and we raised almost $13,000 last year, which was amazing. And this year I'm going to run the fundraiser just during December. So it'll run December 1st until New Year's. I already have a bunch of stuff here to sell that people have donated. But if you would like to donate your gently used or unused um, or duplicate uh, charts, kits, fabric, whatever, send them on and um, we'll, I, I put those up on my website and people can buy them and then the money goes to the shelter. And it's a really great way for you to clean out your stash and it's a great way to raise money for the shelter. Um, this time it's really not for anything in particular. A lot of times with charities, people want to tell the charity, like I'm giving you money, but you have to do this with it. And that's not helpful because a lot of times the charity needs it for something or they might even just need it to just pay bills, like keep the lights on, feed the animals, you know, pay the staff, whatever, whatever, you know, have the pest control come in, whatever it is that they need to do. So we're gonna see how much we can raise. I don't necessarily have a goal this time. 5,000 would be really cool. And so I do have a few things up in the um, stash for cash for cats and dogs section of my site now. I just left them up from last time and I do sell them from time to time and I keep a log. Um, of those and send them a check once in a while. So um, just watch for that coming up in December. And like I said, if you have anything you'd like to contribute, just email me below and I can give you my mailing address. I just got a box yesterday. I haven't looked through it yet, um, but it was, <laughs> she said that some of these she liked so well, she bought them two or three times and there's some good stuff in there. Okay. Uh, oh, and then I was gonna mention too, there was a little cat named Applesauce that I featured in my Instagram at one point, And I may have talked about him here too. He was found by a lady being beaten in an alley by a guy with a board. And Applesauce did have surgery. He's doing well in foster care. He's now ready for adoption. Just this week he's come up for adoption. He's um, He is mobile. He will probably never regain complete use of his back legs. But he's happy. Um, he's very affectionate. He gets around and they totally will be able to find a home for him. Um, he's doing well. He's a happy cat and he looks great. So thank you to those who contributed. This is the kind of stuff that our local animal shelter does. And, um, you know, I know there are a lot of local animal sh shelters throughout the country. In the South here, uh, animal welfare ends up being a big problem because they're just historically haven't been the resources to, for a lot of spaying and neutering and education about, you know, keeping of good pets. And so the shelter takes in about six to 7,000 animals a year and they have a, you know, like 98% live release rate. Um, sometimes animals have to be put to sleep just due to their health conditions. Sometimes we get them in and they're, you know, actively dying. And so um, it, is, it is considered a live release shelter with, um, and, and they're also open admission, which means no animal is ever turned away. It's just a great, great organization. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about quickly three things about my shop, and then I'm going to shut down and come back with those sister samplers. So don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Um, three things in my shop. I added a number, a while ago, Lady Dot Creates product. Over time, I just keep adding, you know, product lines as I see fit. And I hadn't added them yet. And I added the velvets a couple months ago and sold a lot of them. And they come in little packages like this. And it's just for backing projects and things. It's an 18 by 10 inch piece. And there's lots of really cool colors of that, the velvets. 
And then I started getting in her chenilles and other trims. I've got laces. There's like a ruler looking thing that looks like a ribbon ruler, uh, twill tape and stuff like that. It's a really nice, fat, plump chenille trim for doing finishing. Um, and the colors are really, really nice. And I don't know, are you guys eating this? Because I can't keep it in stock. It's very, very popular. I tried to take really good pictures because there just aren't a lot of good pictures of this online. This one, this color here is called Jack, and it's been one of the most popular colors. Um, Licorice has been real popular. Sizzle has been real popular. Um, there's some really great colors, but it's kind of nice, you know, to have a couple colors around just for your projects as you need them. So Lady.Creates, I'm carrying a lot of her products now. Uh, Not Forgotten Farm. Uh, Lori is so talented, and I just love her primitive shtick that she has and I got these in um I got these in recently just because I love them they're thread palettes that she paints they're handmade she and her husband make them and I don't know how many designs there are maybe 20 or 22 different ones that are what I have in and so you can actually you know arrange threads in these um here's a b, b skip here is a star and then you can also wrap thread around this one if you want and um, here's a chicken. They're very, very prim. Um, they'd make great little tuck-ins for like retreat gifts and stitching friends for Christmas and things like that. I just, I think they're really cool. I think they're very cool. Um, and then Scarlet Letter, uh, I those have just been selling like crazy. I added those a couple weeks ago. I've already placed another order. Those are leaving the building and I will have to place another order this week. It's great to see. Marsha has been um, reproducing samplers since 1979. And so she has right now, I think 300 that are still in print. I have almost a hundred in my shop. I'm gonna keep adding as I go. So if there are ones you'd like to see, let me know that you don't see. She has a couple of new ones, including uh, Man, what is it called? Man, Dogs and Deer, which is really, really cool. And then I feel like those lady dot creates like Jack went up my nose and then a uh, couple in an exotic landscape. I'm dying for this one. I love it. I love things that are just so weird and wonky and cool. And she's very, very proud of these. I know they took her a long time um, to work on, but it's been a long process. And so those are just really great charts. And Grimshaw is back in stock. She had run out and had them reprinted. This is one that I've got in my whips. And I know a number of other people, too, have been stitching Anne Grimshaw. It's a great sampler, all stitched in black, beautiful Quaker. I With samplers like that, to me, the beauty is the real feminine elements of, like, the medallions and kind of that lacy look and, like, birds and, and flowers and things. And then just those masculine, angular letters that it's, for some reason, to me, that just is, like, a great design you know that you've got both of those elements and it's all in one color so it, it the shapes really stand out to me it's just a, a stellar stellar sampler stitched 201 years ago as a matter of fact i have um oh and i have so i always when i ship things to you guys i always try to include a freebie right something i used to give out anchor thread um i gave out cards for a while and <clears throat> i've been giving out freebie charts and a couple of weeks ago, I said to Graham, oh, I got to come up with something else now to give out as a freebie. And later that afternoon, Marjorie Massey from France, who I carry her stuff, she's very, very nice, sent me another freebie chart for me to hand out. So I contacted Vistaprint, had them print up a couple thousand. And so you get this cute, cute, cute little chart if you order from me. Isn't that cute? Did I say it's cute? And um, she, it's in full color. And there are no, it does, she doesn't tell you what colors you should use. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's kind of like a, a you know, fleshy color, a pale kind of purpley fleshy color, and then just this dark with charcoal or whatever. But you could stitch it for Christmas. It'd be so cute to do it kind of Christmassy. So you get that free with any order. And it's full color on nice matte cardstock. So that's that. So this isn't goodbye yet. I'm going to shut this down and I want to go get my sister samplers just to show you, just to show you. I think I've shown them before, but I'm going to show them again. So I'll be right back. on. Testing. One, two, three. Hello, I'm back. That didn't take that long. 
and it took even less time for you. So I have these uh, sister samplers that I bought. This was, this was, I would say, my first big sampler purchase. I bought it from Madalena. Again, the color. Uh, I bought it from Madalena, and this, I probably, when would that have been? I don't know. It was some years ago. 2013, probably like 2011-ish maybe, or 2010. And um, they went up on their website a pair of, of samplers stitched by sisters. Now, it's, it's not unheard of, but it's rare to find them especially still together and for sale because a lot of times these things go down in families. Um, and so they had both of them up, and I sent an inquiry uh, to Madalena. It's M-A-D-E-L-A-N-A dot com. And I've bought a number of samplers from them. But anyway, they had this, this set of samplers up. I don't remember what I paid for it. I feel like I got a, I got a good deal. Um, and I inquired about it. I said, you know, what do you, what do you know about these? And um, they told me a few things. And then they said, you know, if you're interested in just one of, a, uh, one of them, we'd be willing to split the pair. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you can't split the pair. You can't split the sisters. <laughs> you can't split them up because... This is, they're here, they're together. And it would be so sad to just have them, you know, just di just diverge in a wood and be less traveled by. So um, I'll show you, these are the, uh, this, these are the actual antiques. Uh, this is Jane, uh, Jane Philpot, and it, it's framed, and I do have good glass on it, but it's still going to get a little bit of a glare. So you can see it's very, 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 very pretty, in great condition, hardly any holage, and just really pretty colors. Now, when I reproduced this one, I dumbed down the pink a little bit on Adam and Eve because they're pretty sunburned. A lot of times you do see this super pink, <laughs> super pink Adam and Eve, but it's such a pretty, pretty sampler. So that was Jane's, and I reproduced hers first. It's got the dove there at the top. And um, it's got the, I think it's a, I think it's a hymn, stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. So it's a, you know, religious sampler. So there's, that's Jane's, okay? And then this one I have not reproduced yet. This is Sarah Philpot. She was younger and, wait a minute, which one of these guys was younger? I thought, aged Hang on. Eight, no, no. Jane was younger. Jane was younger and a better stitcher. Sarah, is this thing still on? Sarah was 11. Jane was 10. And um, this one is similar. You can see the colors are very similar and the layout is similar. And even the sizes are almost exactly the same, but the um, layout of the sampler is different. And... Um, this one has got the deer under the tree, which I think is so great. And it's got some of the same motifs. Like this, the other sampler had this motif. The flowers in the border, though, are different. It's kind of got the checkered grass below. And um, I just think it's really cool. And it's got little touches of, like, pink here and there. Which, and I like, this is one of those things that I like. So you can see this one here, you know, she's got this, this basket. And then this basket, for some reason, she did part of it in this kind of cherry red, just that little bit of it. And to me, I love that, just these little decisions that they make. Like here's a little pink strawberry and here's one that's kind of golden colored. Um, what do you think? I'd probably re reproduce that this coming year. Um, Chris Canaday, the lovely, lovely Chris Canaday, stitched the first one. And um, it really is, it's still one of my favorite reproductions that I've done. I think it's back here. Um, to me, I just, I really thought, I felt like I captured the, um, just the look of the sampler. The colors I thought were really good. And that's Jane Philpot. And you can see I did make those Adam and Eve are not quite as sunburned looking. But the motifs are so, so pretty. Stitched in 1837. So those are the sister samplers that I have. And um, what a pretty, pretty sampler. What a pretty sampler. So many samplers, so little time, right? 
Um, okay, so that's me sharing with you. I hope that you guys have a good week. Obviously. It would be so obnoxious for me to say, I hope you guys have a mediocre week. I hope you have a good week. I'm going to be very busy um, this week, you know, doing orders and things. And then um, I leave for Tulsa in a week and a half, which I'm very much looking forward to. It's 43 people, I think. And um, the Silver Needle Retreat is going to be, I'm the second designer to get to do this um, smaller classroom. Lindy was able to um, rent a uh, or lease a space in the strip mall she's in. The Silver Needle is a very big shop. And there is a larger space that she uses for the bigger retreats, which are often like 100 people or so. But she thought it would be fun to have a space for smaller classes and just kind of a more intimate setting. And so she asked me, I don't know, six months ago or something like that to, to be one of the instructors for this. And um, so it's coming up. And I've got the new reproduction that will be released. And then the, the uh, participants are getting three kits that we're going to work over work on over the course of the three days of the retreat. So I am looking forward to seeing those of you who will be there. And... I guess that's it. So if you if you have things that you need to order from me, it would be best to get your orders in this coming week so we can make sure to get them out before I leave. The website will stay up while I'm gone with a note that just says, you know, I'm going to be gone for a few days. These will go out when I get back. Um, and that's about it. Did I sing all my songs? Did I sing That's What I'm All Into this week? After I, That's What I'm All Into this week. I don't know if I did getting old. I will see you guys later. Happy stitching.